Boop, boop, boop. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good, afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, class. Thanks for being here. I'm Penny. I am your superintendent of schools. And thanks for coming to our first parent information committee meeting for the year. It's a great opportunity these meetings are for us to showcase the amazing things happening in our schools. And I couldn't be happier for our first topic to be our music program. And even more excited that it's a combination of hearing from our amazing teachers and we have students. So we'll start by getting an overview of our music program from three of our teachers who represent an amazing team, as I said. Irene Klein, Amanda Tomes, Steve DeReese. Then we'll just pause for a moment to switch some mics and we will have a panel discussion with a whole group of students. We're very excited you're here. We'll have everyone introduce themselves and we'll end with an opportunity for you to ask questions. We'll all kind of reconvene if you're all able to stay to yeah, the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can ask some questions. So the again, the intent is to share information uh, to really celebrate the great things that we have here in our school district. We are recording this so that we can use this in the future and pick little highlights out. I'm sure we'll have some information about this in Monday's communique as well. So thanks for being here. If, if you don't mind, I'll let each of you introduce yourselves and then yeah. we'll get started. Absolutely. Want to go first? Off? Yeah, go ahead. All right, perfect. My name is Irene Klein. I am a recent graduate from CMU. Uh, for music education. Yeah, fire up. <laughs> um, but before that, I actually attended Midland Public Schools, Chestnut Hill, Northeast, then Midland High, and there I was part of the choir, band, and orchestra as well. I'm currently at Seabert, Woodcrest, Northeast, and Jefferson for K through 6. And I also just completed my student teaching at Dow High and Jefferson. I actually have a former student on the panel, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so for me, yeah, so just a whole lot of Midland, but it's a great place to be. All right, as you are already told, my name is Amanda Tomes. I teach orchestra here. This is my 12th year here in the district, um, and I currently teach at Dow High, Jefferson, and Siebert. But over the course of my time here, I've also taught at several of the buildings, unfortunately, that are now closed. I've also taught at um, Chestnut Hill, Carpenter, East Lawn, and um, what I, for a year I did our shared time program and also taught at Blessed Sacrament. So that's my experience. And just to put out there, because talking about the good things of the program, I'm somebody who grew up in a school district where there was no orchestra. Um, there wasn't any orchestra for three counties. So often when I talk about how like wonderful the program is, it also comes from that perspective of knowing that fewer than 20% of schools in Michigan even have my portion of the program in their school. So. Hi, I'm Steve Dries. Uh, this is my 40th year of teaching. It's my 29th year at, in Midland Public Schools. And I've been uh, at Dow High the whole time. Uh, I used to teach at Central Middle School, and then uh, and I took on Woodcrest and Seabird Elementary, and I also help out at Jefferson. All right. So um, we compiled some information that actually well, I should give credit to um, Katie Dries put together a lot of this information last year and then when we were told like oh you can have a slideshow I compiled a lot of that into this so it would kind of organize it all for us so first of all the breadth of our music program here these are all of the ensembles <laughs> that we have in Midland Public Schools um, so I'll just say it quick because I don't know if everyone can read it and sometimes just hearing it emphasizes that point two high school marching bands two auditioned high school symphonic bands four high school concert bands, four extracurricular jazz bands, multiple pep bands, 10 middle school band classes, and two middle school jazz bands. So that's all the um, band ensembles. Obviously, we don't have um, a full count on the pep bands because that varies by what sports they're playing at. That can vary from year to year. For orchestra, we have the two auditioned high school symphony orchestras. Those are full orchestras, uh, meaning that they include winds, brass, and percussion. There are not very many of those in the state. Like I think it's probably that function as um, orchestras all the time. A lot of schools, if they have a band and orchestra program, will like come together and play as a full orchestra for commencement or something like that. But it's not a regular part of their curriculum. It's a regular part of our curriculum here. Um, two extracurricular honors orchestras, two high school concert orchestras, eight middle school orchestras, and then we get to choir, the two auditioned high school choirs, the two um, concert choirs, the two extracurricular high school vocal ensembles, seven middle school choir classes. We have IB music running at one of the high schools, so there's only one class for that. 
We have two high school music theater programs, including all student pits, which again is very unique to our school district. A lot of our surrounding school districts either hire professionals or they use um, recordings. So that we have entirely student pits in our district. And then for all of our six elementary schools, six elementary bands, orchestras, and choirs. Um, those have asterisks because that can be, that can vary widely, unfortunately, from building to building. The goal is for each of those ensembles to meet um, each class, I should rephrase, not ensemble, because band um, has a woodwind class and a brass class, um, for each class to meet 90 minutes a week for band and orchestra. Um, and the goal, correct me if I'm saying this wrong, is for 30 of those 90 minutes to be within the school day. Unfortunately, we do not always meet that goal in our district, but we still have our classes running. Choir runs, is it 30 minutes a week now? Yep. 30 minutes a week. And then it, it's just one bullet point at the end, but then six full K through five elementary music programs, which it can fit on one bullet point when to say it out loud, but is actually much more extensive than that. Before I go on, is there anything else that we need to chime in with? I was just going to jump in and say, I'm sure a lot of the students on the panel are in multiple ensembles, which this is a key point, even from fifth grade to senior in high school, you can do more than just one, which is the beauty of this program. I did all three, like I said, but even starting at a young age, you can, you can get all the experience. It's awesome. I think uh, it's important to know that we also work very closely with other activities in the school, uh, athletics, uh, other programs like drama, robotics. debate, robotics. We're uh, in close touch with all of those coaches and sponsors to try to work out the schedule and share students back and forth so that you can do a lot, especially at a young age, you want to be, I think, experimenting in a lot of things. Uh, I would also like to just say that's a, a very robust music program and it, and it has stayed that way because of the care and feeding. It's, a, it's like we're a big, strong program, but we can also be a little delicate. Sometimes if uh, something, one little thing gets changed, and then we, we have to go, whoa, 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 whoa. And then, and then a lot of, and that's usually well received. And then the eye toward making sure that the students are able to take our classes is a huge, important role uh, that everyone here plays. Yep. All right, so our, that's the breadth of it. This was in data from last year, um, where last year we tried to do a count. We had 160 public performances for one school district, um, just for instrumental solo and ensembles, so like kids preparing events on their own. We had 182 instrumental solo and ensemble events. Um, last year we had 22 students get accepted to the all state ensembles plus four honorable mentions we tried to do a count of how many after school and outside of school rehearsals took place and again this is district wide this is not a single building obviously but 264 outside of school rehearsals um, and that includes also 13 full days of summer instruction for the band camps before this starts so it's this is going on during the school year but it's much larger than that too and which is an important thing to keep in mind anything else before i Okay. I also thought it'd be really important to point out, um, as Steve was saying, as robust as our program is, um, it would not survive without our Music Booster program. So I feel like they deserve a shout out in the midst of all of this. Um, we have the four booster groups. Um, you're probably, many of you I'm sure are very either, either very familiar with them or are members of them. <laughs> um, they do everything from taking care of uniform distribution and collection. They sell the chemic cards and the oranges and grapefruit that raise the funds for those groups. They chaperone our trips. They help run MSBOA festivals when we host them. The funds that they collect for our program do everything from purchasing new instruments to paying for um, honorariums for guest clinicians. Like when we're having a big event and we need to bring people in, we need to pay those people. It's the music boosters who pay for that. Um, they also, give scholarships for students to take lessons either over the summer or sometimes if a student is learning a new instrument in order to benefit our program. So let's say like there's no tuba in a particular grade level for band and we need to ask a student to learn tuba um, to catch up with their classmates, we would probably ask them to get some one-on-one -on -one lessons. Uh, often it will be a booster organization that pays for those lessons since what they're doing is benefiting the overall program. So just making sure they get the appropriate shout outs that our program could not exist in its current form without that level of parent and community support. Um, 
you will be able to speak to this even more than I will, but we also, it's important to know this is a long history of success with this program in Midland Public Schools. This is not something we're like, oh, our program has started to thrive in recent years. It's not that at all. We have a very, very long history. Um, multiple ensembles um, have appeared at the Michigan Music Conference, which if you don't know what that is, is the equivalent of like winning state finals, but for a large ensemble performance. Um, in recent years, the Dow High Symphony Orchestra has performed once, the Dow High Symphonic Band's gone three times, but you were feeling me in the other day how many like well, the history uh, of that before that midland high has been to the state conference uh northeast middle school has been to the state conference northeast actually went to the international conference back in the 60s two or three times it was so we have a a long a long legacy of excellent performances and being invited to go share our our things uh i would also like to say that the uh being able to perform at those events is a, uh, just a, such a treat. It's a, very, a real challenge and we're competing uh, against ourselves and the composer of the music. The, the composer wrote this, can we do it? And then can you actually discipline yourself to get there to do it? And that's a, it's a very intriguing, uh, complex problem. Yeah. yeah. And re then related to that, I mean, that that's probably like the most notable one because again, like it, there's, it's more of a standards um, that there's you submit and there's a panel that selects you and all this kind of stuff. But because we, there's this long history, our ensembles often receive under invitations to other things. Um, we've our ensembles have received invitations to perform at universities. The one I know as far away as um, couple, like this is close to a decade ago now, but the orchestras got invited to perform at a university all the way down in Indiana. Um, We've done joint performances with professional ensembles in the past. Um, I know especially like the jazz program has a long history of doing stuff like that. Um, both high school bands have in recent years been invited to perform at the Western Symposium on winds and percussion. Um, we've had guest soloists like approach us asking to perform with our ensembles. We've had everything ranging from like the concert master of the Midland Symphony coming and wanting to perform with our ensembles all the way to a couple years ago, the violin professor at Arizona State University reached out. They had family in Michigan. They were going to be here. Could they do a joint uh, concert with us and perform with us? And these, kind of, these kind of things are uh, the beautiful tree, the blossom and the fruit uh, from the roots that the, the folks in the elementary, yes. in the elementary program take on we we get the when we get the kids and start incorporating them into the performing ensembles they already have a, a very good basis of yes. music education from from minutes. the early days yeah. that's, thank you because yeah that's a really important thing to point out yes. um, recent accomplishments I'll just say this really quick um, this year we've had 27 students um, earn seats in the Michigan All-State Honors Ensembles or were honorable mention, um, which I think might be a new record for our district. I'll have to check older records, but that might be our new record. Um, in recent years we've had um, the Michigan School Band and Orchestra Association name three of our ensembles as the best ensemble in their category in the state, a woodwind quartet, a string quartet, and a chamber orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, just last year, three Dow High Choir students were nominated for Sutton Foster Awards. This is a musical theater award. Um, they have a limit of two. They will only nominate two. They came and watched Into the Woods and they nominated three. If that gives you any testament to how that's gone. Um, we have one student here, she's here, um, who won the Nats Musical Theater Award last year. This is a national award. We have a student who last year um, placed a, a national award, the Young Arts National Competition for Violin. We've had dozens of students in recent years be nominated as outstanding soloists by the Michigan School Band and Orchestra Association. We've taken our um, students on trips from everywhere to Disney World to New York City. Um, the group that went to New York City last year, uh, somebody who lives in the city and was a, like an aunt or an uncle of somebody in the group, like wrote a letter to us afterwards that like, oh, I stumble upon these kinds of performances all the time. And this is one of the best ones I think I've heard that we were just there performing in New York City. Um, and then I wanted to make sure this was here as well. We're here representing our staff. We have a very large staff. <laughs> and I think, um, fortunately, because to run a program this size, you couldn't do it without a staff this large. I think it's also important to point out um, what Steve was just saying. About half of this list is elementary general music because that is the foundation. If you don't have that really strong elementary general music program, it's not gonna come, you can't start them in fifth grade and get to the levels of everything we were listing off just there. Yes. So, anything else that I missed? Did I go like a minute over? No. Oh, good. look at that. Miracle of miracles. All right. 30 seconds. There we go. <laughs> well, I guess it's time then to pass over the microphones and we will let you guys take the wheel. 
All right, here we go. Perfect. So welcome, everybody. Is it on? No? Yep. Yep. Welcome. Thank you for coming out in this rain to join us. So let us start by telling everybody your name, which school you're from, and what musical program or instrument that you're in right now. Okay, so hi, my name is Maribel Grassman. Um, I'm a senior at Midland High School. Um, I play violin and flute, so I'm actually a part of the uh, Midland High School Symphonic Orchestra and also a part of the Midland High School Symphonic Band. Um, my name is Maddie Stanford. I'm a junior at Dow High and I play the double bass. So I'm part of both Symphony and Honors Orchestra and then Mr. Dries' jazz program and the IB music class that is taught by Mr. Gardner Northrop. My name is Emily Turberg. I am here representing the Midland High Meister Singers. I'm the president and that is our audition choir at Midland High School. Hi, my name is Gretchen Shope. I'm a senior at HH Dow High School. I am a part of the uh, Dow Chamber Singers and I am also a part of the Musical Theater and Laveau's music programs. My name is Katie Watkins. I am a senior at Dow High School. I'm in the marching band and the Dow High Symphonic Band as well as the jazz band and I play tuba and flute. My name is Chloe DePero and I go to, I'm a senior at Midland High School and I play the oboe in the symphonic band and orchestra as well as I am also a drum major in the marching band. So thank you for joining us and thank you for being a part of our wonderful program. Um, tell us a little bit about when you began singing or playing the instrument and what made you join the MPS music program. Um, so actually, so the Midland uh, program has a fifth grade concert where we get together and uh, the high schoolers will perform for the fifth graders and the fifth graders will get to go have a field trip and come see the orchestras and it's a really cool experience both for the high schoolers and for the fifth graders. So when I was in fifth grade, I got to see that concert and I was blown away by the vast majority of musicians on stage, especially given that it was a full orchestra. So there was string players, there was brass players, there was percussion players, woodwinds players, everyone was there. And um, so it was a really cool experience for me. And so I was immediately inspired to join as well. Um, I was actually sick on the day that we got that concert. <laughs> so I wasn't there, but Miss Tomes came into my fifth grade classroom and she gave us a little demonstration of each of the instruments. And I just, I thought it was so cool. And I really wanted to be able to play it like she did. And I'm pretty sure she just played the Jaws theme. And <laughs> it was really like a simple thing, but it, it just seemed so cool to me to be able to do that kind of thing. So. I joined in fifth grade. So I, in like third and fourth grade, used to sing at my church a lot. I just had a lot of fun with that with our um, children's music program there. And so then I was encouraged by some of the leaders there to join choir because I was having such a good time with that. And once I, so in fifth grade, I joined choir and I had Mr. Ferrison for the first time and I just loved him so much that I wanted to come back. So he was just a great uh, teacher and role model for me. Um, I was in first grade, I believe, when I first started, first started uh, music classes, um, and I had Mrs. DeLong, and she was so wonderful to work with, and she really exposed me um, to different cultures of music, which I was very much interested in, and I remember one day we just listened to the Frozen soundtrack the entire classroom, and I was like, this is definitely for me. Um, <laughs> and I, I really appreciated how she encouraged um, learning solfege and the music theory part of music that we don't really, it, it's a little less fun, but also because we were kids, we got to listen to Frozen and watch The Lion King to be exposed to other kinds of music. So I started piano lessons when I was in kindergarten um, and always just loved like learning the complexity of music. And then my brother, well, my dad is, was used to be the um, head coach of the Dow High football program. So I was always at the games and watching the marching band like as a little kid, I loved the marching band. Like I really didn't want to watch the football game, but I wanted to watch the marching <laughs> band. So then my brother joined band um, and played um, baritone and I just literally like would follow him around the house and like carry his baritone around and be like so excited so I don't know why I started on flute in fifth grade I don't know why I didn't know immediately I'd be a low brass player but I just fell in love with band 
um, just from the very moment I saw the Charger Marching Band take the field the first time. So I actually, I also started off in piano lessons when I was like six, and so that really started my main interest in music. But also, both of my older siblings were part of the music program in band and orchestra. And just being around them and how much fun they had with it, it really inspired me to want to be a part of it as well. So it sounds like, along with a lot of hard work, that m the music program offers a lot of fun, which is why our program is so awesome. Um, tell me about how the music program has supported your school experience and your sense of belonging. Um, so I have to do a huge shout out to Anna Mamassian for this because she is um, our orchestra director and um, she actually teaches orchestra from basically through the middle school through the high school. She's amazing, but um, she is from Armenia and so she has a world map in her classroom and she makes a point of it to play music from all around the world and um, we have this fun little thing where we uh, she gives us a history lesson about the area that we are um, playing music from, some of the styles, some of the culture that's behind it, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I, this is a, uh, she is a great role model, I guess, for kind of opening your eyes up a little bit more to outside of Midland, Michigan, and um, playing other music from around the world. Um, I feel like through the music program, I've just met so many people that without this program, like, there's no way I would have been in contact with any of them. Um, and I just, I feel like I'm very appreciative that I was able to meet so many people and push myself outside of my com comfort zone. And um, each year, I volunteer a lot for the music program. And so I'm getting to know my community more and more. Like, for example, the fruit sale, <laughs> you should definitely buy from Maddie Stanford. <laughs> um, I, I meet so many people and I get to hear their interesting stories and I feel like closer with my community after that. Um, for me, I'm only in one um, ensemble, which is the Meister Singers. So, and the reason for that is because I also do um, sports year round, so I don't have time to do another ensemble, which I probably would like to if I had that time. But for me, um, the people in the music program are all just so diverse and just it, that's such a cool experience to get to meet all these different people with different opinions and because I'm also in sports I feel like it's kind of well round like made me a more well-rounded person because I'm hearing from all different types of people with different um different experiences and like different goals so it's just kind of a really cool thing and I've also felt though with my um, music classes um, compared to any other classes in school uh, any other subjects that uh, the people there are just very welcoming and it's just a very warm place to be and another shout out to Mr. Ferris and my choir director. He's just a very like warm, happy person. And it just makes me always smile coming into, coming into his classroom. And I just feel very like welcomed in my school, which I think is a very important thing. Um, I personally feel that with my experience through the different programs at uh, Dow High, I've really been able to, like everyone else has said, really, really make a friend, make friends and find belonging in a home um, and develop a lot of trust skills because it's a lot different when you're singing in a musical theater ensemble or a soprano alto or full SATB ensemble that it, if you make a mistake, you're not only hurting yourself, but other people. Um, so it, it really develops the skill of trust and being able to lean on each other and collaborate and also um, develop those listening skills since it's not just about you, it is about that entire ensemble view. Um, I think for me, like the amount of kids that are in our music program just kind of like creates this community of music lovers in our schools and I think that that like music is something that I think everybody has in common because everybody likes music of some form I don't think I've ever met a person who doesn't like music <laughs> and I think so that's just something to me that like you know I I walk I walk onto the the parking lot for band camp and I have 195 kids in my corner right so I get to like um be a part of this crazy community and then we get to go and march with Midland High one game a year and that's honestly it's so amazing to be a part of like like you have 350 kids on that field and you're all trying to work together for this one goal and there's just there's no community like that. 
Yeah, me too. I really, I really <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really like that there's just, there's so many people involved in the music program at the school, like, like a vast majority of the students at my school are involved in music one way or the other, and I feel like there's always somebody that I can connect to or relate to with my love of music, and that we all play a part in this amazing community. So it sounds like the music program, you know, offers a lot of diversity, but it's also very inclusive, and it creates that sense of community that sometimes when we're in school we look for, and so props to all of you for creating that. Um, how has being part of the music program changed your perspective on life and school? Um, so this is a great question. So I actually started on violin first in fifth grade, and then I picked up flute in seventh grade. I actually dropped orchestra in eighth grade year to start up band eighth grade year, and then I picked up both again in freshman year. That was a huge life choice for me. Um, but uh, one of the things that is, I've really learned is a good work ethic out of music, because playing two different instruments, uh, is it's a lot, and I also um, I'm in the symphonic band and symphonic orchestra, so there's a lot of practicing that is involved with that. So balancing all of the, that pr practicing time and then also my regular schoolwork. Um, so I think I've learned a lot out of music to be a good musician, contribute to the group, and also a really good work ethic. Um, I think the number one thing that I've definitely picked up on is communication. Um, it's super, super important to be aware of your surroundings and listen to those around you and also to like yourself. You need to be aware of what you're doing at any given moment. And um, I also, and I feel like I appreciate more like what goes into creating something. So I understand like, oh, I should definitely practice my pieces. I should really go practice so that I'm not dragging behind and pulling everyone else down. And like, I feel like that relates back onto school. I should definitely go practice for math. I should go study that and get better and not drag my grade down. <laughs> so my answer to this is something very similar. Um, I've learned a lot of accountability and um, self-responsibility through the music program because um, there's a certain expectation to, we only have an hour a day, um, so you have to go home and practice your music, but the difference um, between this type of homework and other classes is that when you walk into the classroom there's nobody there checking to make sure that you've practiced until you don't really kind of notice who's practiced and who hasn't until you get to the end um, part of your rehearsals where you're like where you're kind of everybody kind of knows the song now and you're getting closer to that concert date and um, that's like a really important thing because um, with my other classes it's so much easier for me to be like if I don't get this done I'm gonna get a bad grade but in choir, it's if I don't get this done, like you were saying, is that like you're dragging other people down and you're letting the class down. So I think that is like something that I hadn't really learned before, um, before coming to high school and we started getting those assignments to do at home. And um, it really affects my other classes and how I respond to tho those two and um, work in those classes. So my homework now is like, even if the due date's in a couple days, I have to like take the responsibility to like do it now and do, do what I can. So. I think that like it just it is a different type of responsibility that you learn through the music program. Definitely agreed with uh, everyone that spoke before me. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is that on my perspective of school, um, you, I've always had choir of fourth and one one year fifth hour, um, and I've been in chamber singer since my freshman year of high school, and it has no matter what, always given me something to look forward to. Um, especially, you know, uh, Dow High is an IB school and those testing periods can be extremely stressful. Um, and even just last week I had like my uh, oral exam for my IB English class like right before my choir class and right when I was done I was like, oh thank goodness it's choir. I finally have like something to look forward to. Um, so it honestly it's like uh, a relaxation session for a lot of our students to be able to look forward to this bit of like their passion and something that they love every single day. Yeah, I definitely ag agree with Gretchen on that one. I, I look forward to band every day and like I mean, you can't. You also can't argue with the benefits of music. It helps with, like, so many things: problem solving, math, teamwork. Um, I think a huge thing for me has been like learning just how to work together as one unit and 
like really be a team um and the fact that like everybody is playing a piece of one like putting one piece of the puzzle in and I think that's just like something that I can take away in um like in normal life I honestly you can't find anything that's the same way it's similar in sports but it's not even quite the same because if one person is going too fast and I'm a measure ahead then then I won't um that I won't sound like I'm supposed to be and the picture won't be right. Uh, something that's really changed my perspective is just the importance of being in a community like that with so many other people supporting you and cheering you on and just how we're all working together towards the same goal and we're all pushing each other to become better, to be, do the best that we can in our concerts and performances and just the way that we can be a good example to others and it can lift each other up and just really the community, it's, yeah. I don't know how you fit all of this in like 24 hours. Do you <laughs> sleep? Do you eat? Do you have fun? I don't know. <laughs> so let's move on. Are there skills that you learned in the music prog program that transcend music and will help you be successful in whatever steps you take? Um, so this kind of goes back to what I said uh, last time. I definitely think that my work ethic and um, my being prepared for different things has significantly improved. Um, one of the things that I definitely struggled with when I was trying to balance two different uh, instruments was that um, getting back up when you kind of are start struggling and like that, like, oh my goodness, I'm behind on all of these different things. How am I going to prioritize and how am I going to make sure that I still get the grades that I want and I still am uh, participating as a part of the ensemble. So that um, resilience, I guess, has been also something that I've learned. Um, I think I've definitely learned, especially over the last couple years in high school, like to have confidence in your ability and to not necessarily like overestimate yourself, but you need to be aware of what you can and can't do and you need to be proud of your skills and especially like with the jazz program, that's something that's really new to me. Like. I'm the only bassist in the ensemble, and I'm hooked up to an amp, and so I'm kind of projected out over everyone, and it's it's really scary. But I think, like, knowing that I can do it and knowing that, like, as long as I work hard and try my best, I'm, I'm really doing well, and to have that confidence in yourself is really important anywhere in life. So in my class, we've had a lot of opportunity for leadership positions if you choose to be a part of that. So we have like a board of, I don't really know, we don't have a direct name for it, but we have like a group of people who get together and um, kind of help put the class together um, because our director, he, he goes all over town, he teaches all over, so he's very busy. So there's some things that we have to kind of take charge of, but it's also a great experience for us to get to um, learn how to be a leader and how to organize things. And um, for me this year, what I've seen different from last year, so I'm a junior this year, so um, last year as an underclassman, I kind of was able to slack off a little more and just kind of like listen to the leaders in my section. Um, but this year, I'm kind of realizing like listening to the underclassmen now that I am an upperclassman is that I'm that person that they're listening to. So I kind of have to make sure I'm prepared and ready to go and ready to, to lead them in that way. So yeah, I just, I'm really grateful for all the leadership experience um, I'm getting and everything I'm learning from that, even when I do make mistakes, like the, our choir is so supportive and stuff that I'm able to learn from my mistakes instead of just dwell on them. And I think that's something I'm gonna carry with me throughout life and um, my next steps going into college, wherever I go, so. Um, as a choir student, I think that I really have expanded my knowledge of other cultures and religions. Um, the benefit of singing is that you really get to delve into this different language. Um, and over the years, I, our um, program has sung so many different Latin, Hebrew. Last year, we did a Romanian piece at state on, um, festival, uh, and it was, it was absolutely lovely. And just being able to learn and be exposed to these different cultures is so beneficial. And I really appreciate how this program doesn't um, put Western music as the forefront or best type of music. It is really open and inclusive of different um, genres and especially different vocal styles. Um, so also being able to uh, expand my knowledge and um, be able to recognize that my type of singing is not necessarily better than another cultures or another religions. Um, all of it is wonderful to experience. 
One of the biggest things that I've taken from my years in band is um, learning perseverance. And um, specifically, like, when I switched from flute to tuba, it was my sophomore year of high school. And so, you know, the other, the other tubas have been playing for four years already, and I'm like, okay, here we go. We're going to try this. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so I, like, wrote in my fingerings on everything, and... Even when I tried out for symphonic band, I was still writing in my fingerings <laughs> on all my pieces. Um, but eventually, like, I just kept trying and kept working and kept practicing and got private lessons with a scholarship, so that was nice. Um, and just as time went on and I kept persevering, then, like, I now, like, am very confident in my abilities to play tuba. And I think that's something I can take with me um, through any endeavor I do next is that like sometimes success doesn't come right at the start, but if we just keep trying, keep working at it, then we'll get there in the end. Uh, the main thing that I've taken away has been um, just leadership skills. I've learned a lot about leadership, especially being a drum major and like what it truly means to be a leader and that it's really just about like serving others and doing your best to help others as much as you can to be the whole the whole band better or just the whole whatever it is you're leading and um, just how you can make positive impact on anyone's life just in whatever you're doing. So this has been amazing and it seems like the music program has taught you so many skills far beyond the classroom. So as we wrap up, can you tell us a little bit about your plans after high school and how music will play a part in it? Um, yeah, so I actually am not looking to pursue music, but um, one of the things that I have been influenced a lot by is, so I'm a part of Pitt Orchestra, and then also a part of, we did a lovely, amazing experience uh, this past year where um, Ms. Mamassian put together a band, orchestra, and choir performance with addition to um, alumni. So it was this huge group, so I have had a lot of experience with um, ensembles ranging from really small with like a week's prep um, to ensembles that have been really really huge and we've had a bunch of time and I think that those experiences with those different ranging ensembles and working with those different people that is something that I will always value um, and so I'm definitely when I'm pursuing my college per, uh, plans I am looking for uh, colleges that have a lot of uh, small ensemble uh, opportunities so that I can keep going with all of that kind of stuff. I also don't plan to major in anything music, but I, I've been looking into possible like minors or even just like an extracurricular kind of thing. Like, oh, I'm part of this little ensemble on the weekends. I, but I also think that what I've learned through music will stay with me and I'll constantly think of that when I'm learning and growing and getting a job and starting a family and stuff like that. So, that's all right. Um, so I um, don't have a set plan yet, but I am really interested right now in joining the military and being an officer of some sort, uh, specifically through the Navy or the Marine Corps. And so I've been looking a lot into the Naval Academy, which is a really hard goal. Um, so I think just what I've learned about working hard and having to, like we were talking about earlier, holding yourself accountable is um, going to help me hopefully achieve that goal and if not like the process to to trying to get there and stuff is going to be a lot I'm going to learn from that a, a lot from that as well so yeah I think my work ethic that I've learned from that and um also just like the leadership skills that I've gotten to experience and try out um are going to be very helpful um so I plan to double major in musical theater and arts management with a minor in dance um which definitely speaks to that work ethic that we were talking about um that's a very uh, time c consuming plan for college um and I really am appreciative of the way in which um the Dow High program has inspired me to actually pursue this as a real thing. Um, shout out, I never actually did a, a thank you, so this is my thank you to the Music Boosters. Um, they gave me a uh, quite a large scholarship to go to San Diego uh, this past summer, which Mrs. Tomes mentioned, um, and I went to the National Associations of Teachers of Singing, um, and I won out of 13,000 um, participants, which I, is amazing, but I know literally would not have happened without the support that this district gave me. Um, and so I plan to continue doing those competitions and um, 
continue to actually pursue this as a real uh, career. Um, and I think that they inspired, even if it is a minor or an extracurricular or just something that keeps you passionate and um, lively throughout your life, it is definitely something that, you know, none of us will ever give up on. So I'm also um, not planning to study music. I'm planning to study biology, but um, I am already involved in um, my worship team at my church, and I plan to continue to be involved in worship wherever I go next um, because I love that part of music, and I, um, I also plan to hopefully find some like ensembles wherever I land um, and then I can just participate and maybe invest in a tuba at some point. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, but I, I just, I'm never going to forget what, what this program has given me. It's like, it's amazing to think about all of my friends and all of just the experiences and memories that I'm going to take away from this. And just like, I'm never going to forget how music brings people together. That's something that I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. I also don't plan on studying music or going into like music related, but um, I do. Well, I will continue to play music um, as a hobby and hopefully find like some ensemble. Like I have participated in the Midland Community Orchestra a few times the past couple of years, and so I hope to find something similar because I really enjoy doing that. And I know that I'll always be able to connect with people who have grown up playing music or who are musicians because, yeah, I, I can relate to their experiences and, yeah. So thank you for joining us and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules and missing those math and ELA classes <laughs> uh, to come and talk about our music program. We really appreciate it. Sure. <laughs> yes. Um, so, like equity inclusion in the, in the music program, were there any fees associated with instruments or rentals or anything like that? Or anything that prohibits any? <laughs> While she's coming up here, I knew that the orchestra does have a. Um, uh, relationship with Shar, which is a rental company, so uh, a lot of uh, students are able to uh, rent instruments through that, and through their rental process, they can uh, build up like points, I guess, towards Shar that will also help them in their po potentially finding another instrument for themselves. But yeah, go ahead. So as a baseline, there's no fee to be a part of the music program. Um, that being said, a lot of students, and understandably so, especially when they're talking about like wanting to continue long term, do want to acquire their own instrument at some point or something like that. So we do highly encourage renting instruments. Um, speaking as the orchestra person, um, it's very rare for a student to be tall enough and have large enough arms and hands to be playing on a full-size instrument when they start playing. And the way a rental program, all the rental programs, and basically all the rental programs in Michigan work, is that they're called they're not rent to own programs, they're rent to buy. So a lot of families opt to do that because essentially what that means is they rent an instrument, when they grow, they get swapped up for a new size at no extra charge, et cetera, et cetera. And this goes on and goes on until they reach the full size instrument, at which point all the money they paid in rental fees, now that they're on a full size, they can go and purchase an instrument and all the money they paid in rental fees gets discounted off the cost of purchase. So in order to have an instrument post-graduation, Many families opt to do that. There's a similar situation in band where most families opt to rent because they want to be able to have their own instruments. But we have a supply of school instruments, and if a student can't rent or doesn't want to rent, we can supply them with a school instrument. Now, some of our inventory is a little depleted. I'll just put that out there right now. We've been actually, some of the people who are part of Boosters are nodding because we've been talking with Boosters about like maybe plans moving forward to try to replenish some of those inventories. Um, but if a student, and it's not the kind of thing where they even have to fill out a form or anything, they just have to say, I need to use a school instrument and we will get them a school instrument. Um, we do often offer like extra, so for example, if the New York Philharmonic's gonna be in Ann Arbor, and we're, we're like, okay, this is an awesome opportunity, 
let's get a bus and get tickets. Well, if we're doing something extra like that, sometimes we'll be like, okay, the boosters will pay for the bus, you guys pay for your ticket, but all a student has to say is, I, I can't get my ticket, and the boosters covers it. So um, the only really big things that, again, are optional, they're not required to be part of the program. If there's like a big trip going on or something like that, that's obviously then a cost, but they're not required. So at a baseline, you can go through the entire program without paying a penny and school supplied uh, materials all the way through. I'll let you add on to that if there's, yeah. Uh, we do have a summer use fee, that uh, $25 summer use fee if you want to check out an instrument for the summer. And that goes toward helping to maintain and keep those up. Uh, but if somebody can't afford it, they just have to quietly let us know and, and we'll take care of it. And choir's free. <laughs> <laughs> Your um, voice is yours. <laughs> I just wanted to add. <laughs> but band and orchestra are amazing. And I, I, I rented when I was a kid. I played French horn here. So I don't remember, I mean, I don't remember paying anything besides the summer fee. So it's awesome. Um, also, a quick note about choir it is free. Um, but also, uh, Chamber Singers has, um, it works closely with the uh, Spark Scholarship through the Center for the Arts, which allows um, students of color to get a scholarship to get um, voice lessons with professionals in New York. Uh, it's very beneficial, and it has helped a lot of our students. I know in, in my experience when we do have a problem with that, we'll, sometimes we'll work with the individual student to modify their schedule. They may be the only brass player in a woodwind class, but at least they, they're getting access to the program. So it, it doesn't have to always cut you out. Well, and um, we've had some, and again, because this varies from school to school, like I said, this is one of those areas that because each school schedules it, how much is in the school day and how much extra transportation is needed is not universal district wide. Um, and I've definitely taught in buildings where because the class was after the bus buses ran and a student relies on the bus, um, the school has covered the cost of um, dial a ride to transport them as well so we've been able to kind of make those arrangements the unfortunate thing is that we as staff know that we will make those arrangements but speaking of like, from the inclusion standpoint if on paper it looks like well this is after school i can't do it we're only able to help when we know there's a problem and sometimes people just don't approach us with letting us know there's a problem because they see it and immediately think they're not going to be able to make it work so that it, to be honest about that that is an, an element where I know not everybody gets included because they see that on paper and think it won't work for their family but we if they, we find out about it we work with them <laughs> and we make it work <laughs> so kind of tying into the accessibility one thing you know I, we've had kids in the music program for a long time and we're like at the end now it seems like scheduling secondary has gotten harder through the years. We've got high achieving kids who are trying to get into math classes, science classes, music classes. And I see some nods up there, the front, right? <laughs> Is there anything we can do to make the high, because there's a huge synergy between high achieving music and high achieving academics to ease those scheduling so we don't have kids who are compromising in a, in a lower level music group or in a lower level math class because these conflicts are coming up. And I know it's a, it's a very constrained system of mess, right? I know it's so challenging, but is there anything we can do to kind of ease that to have, because it's really kind of sad to see the kids actually compromise. So. Do you want to start? Hmm. Do you have an answer for that? Oh, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll give it back yeah. to you. I'm going to be careful what I say. <laughs> So yes, it is, the master schedule is extremely complex to put together. Uh, and I'm looking at two of my colleagues who have, three of my colleagues who have done this uh, in their experience. So the complexity of that is such, I believe that our principals and assistant principals are doing the best to meet the needs of all students in the system. It's never going to be perfect. Uh, so I'm, I'm answering your question with a non-answer other than to say each year we keep trying to work toward 
providing as much opportunity for students as we can. The, um, the constraints are really around the multitude of offerings we have. And as a school community, it's clear that we really value lots of choices and options for students. So every time we add an additional option, it adds another layer of complexity to that master schedule building. Um, I'm, I'm not interested yet in a conversation about limiting choice. Um, <laughs> but if we if we get to that point, it will will that's where we have to go is thinking um, about how we limit choice. Well, one Counterpoint, thing, Mr. One, Dries. But <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing we have enjoyed is like I know a lot of times our the people who do scheduling look at the big swing of the music classes first. So when you put symphonic band symphony orchestra get together, that's a lot of high flyers, a lot of people that are in a lot of advanced classes, and then they tend to try to fix that problem first and then go through a lot of the other classes might have multiple sections offered so that you can maybe play around with those schedules a little bit and I know that has that's one of the things where I mentioned earlier the, the the care and feeding and nurturing of the program is sometimes behind a closed door uh, with somebody making that kind of a decision to in the scheduling building and, and we've been benef benefited from it for a long time Oh, I yeah, I was, I, I was, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, no, I mean, I'm just speaking on my experience as a student who's, I graduated in 2019, so not too long ago. Um, I, I did, well, when I knew I was going to be a music major, I did like all music classes because I knew that that was my priority, but up until that point, I mean, I took uh, honors math, honors chemistry, honors biology, honors English all the way through, um, I'm trying to think yeah, I took all honors classes, especially at the beginning, freshman and sophomore year. It's not like honors. It's like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 something. I don't know if that's changed recently, but I do remember. Okay, it's the same. Perfect. So I remember like the 0.3 was the advanced classes, So and, and there's multiple sections. It's trickier junior, senior year when it becomes like smaller sections of the honors classes. Luckily, I was able to do that, though. And I'm, I'm assuming it's because they took a look at the music classes. And I don't know what went behind the scenes, but I can say, at least from my experience, I was able to do it. I was able to do all my honors, math, science, um, chemistry, et cetera, et cetera. And I took four music classes at the same time. So I, I, at least I can say that they're putting in all the effort. And Jeff Jasser was actually my principal at the time. So shout out to that. <laughs> I'm sure that was hard work. I'm going to I'm going to butt in. I'm going to butt in. Okay. So I take um, symphonic band and symphonic orchestra which are during the same hour and one of the things that I encountered was that uh, trying to get all the classes that I wanted to. And I guess I'm going to speak more to the students in this case, not as much to the parents, but I'm sure your parents uh, support is greatly appreciated. But as a student, talking to your teachers, talking to your counselors is like huge like that is oh, the yeah. best thing that you can do for yourself I talked to Miss Mamasian I talked to at that time actually it was Mr. Monroe now it would be Mr. Adder. Um, but I talked to my directors about that I talked to my counselor about that making sure that I had to ad advocate for myself make sure that I got the classes that I want to um, because yeah it's a huge schedule and if they don't know it's a problem they're not going to do anything about it so uh, one thing that really helps a lot is the optional seventh period that oh. students can elect to take I know uh, the last time we asked it was like 65 percent of the music program had taken a seventh period at some point so that's a that's a, a real great little safety valve that kind of helps make some of this stuff work that was what I was going to add in yeah and I also just wanted to say like our music directors are so amazing if you bring up an issue like they'll try their best to work around it I had last year I had a non-negotiable trip that I had to take and I also had festival on the same exact weekend and Miss Tomes and and there's robotics also there's a state <laughs> robotics and I brought it up to Miss Tomes and I was like I'd really like to meet it but unless it is on Friday night I cannot go and I I I think we missed festival the year before too what what had happened the that particular year we um and we actually just went through this in order to make all this schedule stuff work so festivals when our groups go and get judged get adjudicated um and it's done by a statewide organization so you submit your request for what day you would like to go and that request may or may not 
be honored. In our particular district, they're more likely to honor your request if you're the first to get it in. And because Maddie had come to us with this conflict, and she wasn't there were a few other people with things we had to work out, we coordinated with the robotics team, we coordinated with DECA, and we co coordinated with SWIM to make sure like we, we will request this weekend if you request that weekend. And then because with Maddie's particular situation, we knew that group has to go Friday. The only way that request will be honored because it's going to make for a long Friday day is if that um, we're first in hand. Our registration has to be first in hand. So when that went live, district-wide, this was all four secondary buildings. We all filled out our um, information in the morning, worked with the people in the office to get the checks, and then Mr. Doris drove the registration down to Owasso <laughs> so that we would be first in hand in order to make that work. <laughs> And then we got snowed out and it ended up not mattering. Yeah. But the point is, <laughs> the point, but the point is that like, if people communicate, we, we will move heaven and earth to make it work if we need to. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna add on, um, I at Midland High, and I'm sure this is the same at Dow High, I have never um, spoken to any um, teacher or counselor or anybody of an administration who wasn't just kind to me and willing to help me and stuff. So I think like what, what Maribel is saying is like, you just have to like, like find your voice and just speak up on like what you're what you're struggling with. And um, there's tons of people wanting to help you and stuff. So, but like you said, if no, if you're not going to say anything, then nobody's going to know about it. So I just would encourage, talking to you guys, I guess, encourage your kids to do stuff like that and not be afraid to talk to their teachers and their counselors because everybody's there to help them. So yeah. Yeah. Also for me um, specifically, I've never had a scheduling conflict until this year when I couldn't have the, the correct art class that I wanted to be in, of all things. And my art teacher, like I talked to him about it, I ended up in like commercial art and I wanted to be in, I wanted nothing to do with commercial art because <laughs> it's all computers and I'm like, no thank you. And he literally um, agreed to like next semester if I wanted to, he agreed to, even though he already has IB art and commercial art in one class. He agreed to run a third separate curriculum for me if I wanted to do 3D art that hour. So, like, teachers are very, very good about, like, accommodating for, like, getting your schedule the right way, like, the way you can, like, you can be involved in everything and make it work as long as you just keep communicating with people. Okay, yeah. we have only uh, a few minutes left, and I have one last question. So you all are amazing music students, obviously. Thank you for being here. And just maybe one or two of you respond to this, one from Midland High, one from Dow High. Is there space, a sense of belonging for students who might not be as serious as you are about music? What about the student who just wants to tinker or just wants to be part of this awesome community that you talked about, Katie? How does, how does just the, the sort of the average student fit in who's not overzealous about music? Is there a spot for them? I can speak on this. Um, at Midland High School, we have a um, chorus, and then we have our audition choir, which is the Meister Singers. And I definitely say they're, like, I, I, I'd say I'm pretty serious about music, and I, I pride myself in, in working hard in that class. But also, like, me, along with a lot of other students, even in the audition choir, do not plan on doing choir after high school. And... Um, that's like totally okay and that just shows like like everybody's welcome there and stuff but we also have the chorus which is a really good class for those who just want to just have fun and honestly like we, when we promote the class we do say it's it, it's an easy a of some sort because you <laughs> you it's participation <laughs> yeah but it's and it's just like you participate and um, as long as you're participating and then you then you pass the class so like it's a, a lot of people get into choir doing thinking that and then they realize how much they like it so I've seen these people stay in throughout the years um, even if they choose not to move up to the audition choir they stay through this class just because they love the community and stuff so I'd say there's definitely is a place for that and then it's just a matter of um, deciding how much um, extra work you want to do because as you go higher through the program um, that that's where like the more outside of class work there is going to be so I think there's a lot of different options and I know especially for like band and orchestra even though I haven't experienced that there is like a lot right so yeah I'd say there's there's a place for everybody in the music program yeah so there's there's definitely like at Dow too there's different levels of like any any of the different branches of the music program like you can be in green band or you can be in symphonic band or you can be in gold band like whatever like whatever you want to do whatever how much you want to put into it and 
I also think, like, for me, I think it's it's not easy all the time, but it's very doable to be heavily involved in a lot of things and get, like, the right accommodations. Like, Mr. Doris and I have had to work pretty closely together this fall because I'm so involved in cross country and like I'm pursuing running cross country in college and everything so sometimes I'll have a meet and well maybe I won't be able to make a rehearsal or maybe I'll only be able to make it to the game after halftime or I'll have to miss something and it's still like you still can be really involved and be in those upper ensembles but you just have to make sure like you're communicating and like that's honestly the bottom line is just communication but it's it's super doable to be to be a, not want to be super involved and just try it out or to be really involved and it, it all works out yeah awesome i have just one thought uh, we're at 101 I'm you gonna get be, 60 seconds okay. Mr. Uh, the uh, kind of like a canary in the coal mine the uh, music and arts program that's flowering and wonderful uh, you can pretty well bet that most of the required subjects are going to be great too so when people are shopping for a school district, I usually tell them, go look at what, go to a concert, go to an art show, see what's happening. And then I bet you the rest of the classes will be in line. Thank you so much. Let's thank, thank you to our panel, to our teachers. Thank you for joining us. Uh, check the communique and other communications for future dates and new topics if you have an idea of a topic you'd like to hear about, feel welcome to send me an email. Have a great day.